Hey, so I wanted to kind of show a quick overview of how I put designs together sometimes. So here's the customer's bike. This is a BMW 1000 RR. And the first thing I do is I create a mask and knock out the panels that I want to wrap. And so that's pretty standard Photoshop work right there. Let's uh, create a bottom layer. So these bottom layers are often be what the background color or the wrap's going to be. So for this one, let's kind of select a blue. Um, printers often kind of don't replicate the same blue as the blue that you see on your screen. So what I'll do is I'll tend to be a little bit on the saturated and lighter side. So um, something like that. So um, another technique we do is we like add in other elements here. So we've got a few elements. Um, this one right here is a vector image of a cityscape. So let's use the place command and drop that in there. Click OK. And then we'll hold down Shift and scale it up a little bit so you can see that we've got uh, city buildings in there. Um, and then because of the way Photoshop works, a lot of things kind of work out better if you rasterize these rather than leaving them as smart objects. I'm just going to duplicate this and kind of move it over there. I want to have some cityscape up in this area as well. So it kind of looks more like it's into the design. And uh, I actually think I, what I may do is kind of move this front cityscape up a little bit because I want to have some of it on the tank. So we'll go ahead and merge um, these together. You don't necessarily have to. I'm going to drop out the bike and kind of look at this. So if you look at this white and illustrator files are like this sometimes. If we sample this white color. You can see it's not a true white. It says the RGB is EF, EF, EF. And if we sample this black, you know, it's a dark gray. It's not, it's not true black. Um, so what I want to do is I like to go into adjustments and let's just increase the contrast here a little bit and so now if we look at this we're going to have a true white I believe yeah so all F's and a true black yep all zeros okay so now what I want to do is unhide the motorcycle layer and because of the way the bottom is on the images I want to fill in some of this with black as well so let's just take and paint in some black at the bottom there. And um, another thing I like to do sometimes too is like to on this mask for the body cutout is I'll click on this and then I'll uh, create a new layer. Let's move it above motorcycle layer. And then I'll do like a stroke and kind of a contrasty color like green. And then so once you have that there, you can hide the motorcycle layer. And you can see where the the graphics kind of overlap. So that's that's kind of important because when we're let's say we're going to paint some of this bleed in there, what you want to do is you want to get down far enough to where it's out of the body work to where you wouldn't be selecting uh, some of the graphic and it not you know you'd be actually selecting something other than black. So you don't want to do that. So let's uh, paint some of that in there. And then it looks like some of the white might need to be painted in there as well, too. So let's let's fill in some of this white. There we go. And so that's going to give us enough room to select, you know, the background graphics as we cut this up. And I think what I want to do here is actually do a selection like this and kind of emulate sort of a, a building shape right there rather than that uh, paintbrush shape. Okay, so I'll hide the bike and we got that traced in there. So now uh, the main background of the design, and you know, it looks pretty cool is white. The main background of the design, we wanted it to kind of show that blue through. So what you can do here is you can select this to be like multiply and um, 
and drop out the white there. So now you can see that blue is kind of the background color. So we'll go ahead and save this. Let's open up some of these other um, files we got here. So you could go online and search all these other uh, elements that you may want to use. I got a graffiti arrows element and like a half dot, half turn dot. So let's drag this into our design and let's click on the half dot and drag that in there as well. So we can close this document out. So now we got a half dot we can drag in there and then we also got this arrows. There's our arrows layer. So yeah, we could put this back anywhere. I think I kind of want to do that towards the front and this half dot we can kind of move it up here out of the way until we're ready to use it so yeah these arrows um graffiti arrows work really well because they're kind of grungy and then they go good with like urban environments um and they blend in really well with different graphic elements so in the photoshop uh file i drug this from it had an effect applied to it i'm just going to drag this effect down the trash can get rid of it so the original graphic here is white and black. And if I want its color to drop out, all I got to do is go to multiply. And so now the fill color of the white's gone and it shows the blue in the background. So now we've got the half dot back here. And I think the half dot, what I'd like to do is keep it white because it kind of creates like a good base to mix in there with, um, to kind of show, uh, variation in the design let me drag this below the arrows so it's kind of back it looks a little messy there i think i may kind of set this like right there so it kind of gives you a feeling of that being like a sunburst behind the city okay so another thing i commonly do is add logos or graphics and so i'm just gonna put the bike skins logo there we could put other logos but we don't want to show that we're using those um, unless it's like on uh, non-commercial examples and things like that. So we could put the bike skins logo there. We could also duplicate this logo and move it to the back. Now the problem you may get into sometimes here is your logo may overlap like a contrasty area. So what you can do here is you can create certain kind of strokes that go around it so let's um let's set this back to what it may normally be and i actually want to zoom in here just a little bit more so you can see it so let's go to um effects and stroke right now it's set to let's make this be color so you're going to see one that's kind of similar to this where you can add a stroke to it and so you could do it all white like that, but then you still see some of that blue and stuff back there. So it looks kind of busy. So another neat way to add a stroke is like a, a gradient stroke. And if you set the shape to be shape burst, it'll kind of follow the contours of the graphic. And then so you can add a stroke in there that kind of outlines the graphics like that, where it's picking up the blue from the background and then also white. And of course you could just, you know reverse that like that it actually looks pretty cool being reversed so we'll click okay there um, another thing too that a lot of people don't think about with designs is when you have uh, lettering like this you know you could integrate this into the design and you could just you know you could have a uh, graphics that kind of come in like this so it kind of looks more like a race bike where there's you know like a big sponsored logo now this uh bmw has some scallops right there there are air vents that come in so it, it might not work as well but down here it kind of works so you could um, easily get away with something like that so really quickly i just wanted to kind of show you some of the things we go through with creating these designs you know we're really flexible in changing these we could change the um, background color you could go in and uh, choose a lighter blue or if you want to do like all of drab or something like that you, know, you could really go kind of all out with it um, it's really common to also use different logos from other companies a lot of people contact us and they want to have a race bike that's made out of their company logo or there's certain characters they want to throw in there um, 
I'll probably do a lot more videos like this in the future that kind of show uh, moving around in Photoshop and some of the different possibilities and techniques that we work with to set up these designs because I think it's it's neat for the customer and also designers to be able to look at things like this and kind of see what the process is.